All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 46, The Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Engineering Acids Part 2. This is probably my favorite episode in the series, and I think you are all going to really enjoy this one. So in today's episode, I will be discussing the applications for the hydrochloric acid solution that was once being produced inside the central pyramid of Giza. And perhaps to your surprise, we won't be discussing the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining, but we will be talking about gold. So hopefully now I have your attention, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell when you get noticed when the new videos premiere every single week. I always forget to mention this, but please follow me on Instagram at The Land of Chem. I post on there daily with exclusive photos and videos from all of my research expeditions to Egypt and Ireland. If you want to help support the channel, just go to www.thelandofchem.com. I have limited first edition print copies of the book and brand new Land of Chem merch. Link in the video description below. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with today's episode. So in previous episodes, I have gone into great depth explaining exactly how hydrochloric acid was being produced inside of the Central Pyramid. Most recently, episode 26, Hydrochloric Acid and the Central Pyramid. I'll put a link in the video description below. And you can see here the prominent and commanding Central Pyramid, which, in my opinion, is the greatest masterpiece of the Giza Plateau for reasons that we will be getting to soon in a later episode. And these two pictures are probably my favorite from last year's trip, and I have an exceptional video, episode 20, my 2021 research expedition recap with some exclusive videos from inside of the structure, and I will also put a link to that one in the video description below. Now, a very quick review. Here is a three-dimensional diagram, and the deposits of iron oxide ore are found all around this entire area, as well as within the bedrock core of the pyramid itself. Now, inside of the structure, we have two chambers here and here connected by this passage system. The upper chamber, which you can see here, is your primary reaction chamber. And the lower chamber, which you can see here, is your collection and extraction chamber. And this dual shaft system being a water intake and flushing mechanism for any gases that were remaining in the primary reaction chamber. And this is a comparison between a small scale apparatus for the production of hydrochloric acid and a much larger scale version, which is the internal configuration of the central pyramid. So now, what can you do with hydrochloric acid? Well, a lot of the same stuff that you can do with sulfuric acid, but it produces metallic chlorides as opposed to metallic sulfides, which brings me to application number one and particularly relevant for our upcoming discussions making ferric chloride, which you can see here. And this is the product of iron metal that has been dissolved in hydrochloric acid. And this substance has a very specific application that is directly related to the Egyptian pyramid industrial scale chemical manufacturing operation. And that is the coagulation and flocculation of particulate material in the process of water purification. And you can see a depiction of that process here and what ferric chloride can really do. So this is that depiction showing the activation of ferric chloride in a sewage or water treatment application. Now, some of you may have heard the alchemical phrase solve et coagula, which means to dissolve and coagulate. So we know that coagulation has been incorporated into the seven stages of the quote unquote spiritual alchemical process. But these are all legitimate scientific operations of a chemical extraction and purification process, coagulation in this particular case being relevant to the process of water purification. 
And again, in this case, the origin of the use of the process of coagulation was in ancient water treatment and purification. So we have the activated carbon that can be produced using the ammonium bicarbonate from the bent pyramid and the ferric chloride that can be created from iron and the hydrochloric acid from the central pyramid, which were both essential to this ancient water purification process. And this ancient water treatment operation was critical because once again, you have to provide food and clean drinking water for this entire civilization. This was a civilization large enough and sophisticated enough to build the Egyptian pyramids. And I am certainly not going to suggest, but mainstream history probably would, that these people were drinking dirty river water. Nor would I suggest that the water from the Nile River is suitable in its original condition for use in chemical reactions. So this is a picture from my first trip to Egypt and my thus far only trip down to Luxor. And this was a genuinely magical night. But let's go back to the very beginning of this story. And I explained how the Nile River water was being utilized to facilitate these chemical reactions. Well, that water has to be purified first. And with these two materials, ferric chloride and activated carbon, that can be accomplished quite effectively. But how were these substances being applied? And where was this operation occurring? Well, you will find out soon enough, so subscribe and stay tuned. And just a quick reminder that brand new Land of Chem merch is finally available at thelandofchem.com. I've got the new fifth degree logo, the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid on a raw image for the central pyramid of Giza. And don't forget the OG second degree logo designed by yours truly, a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle representing the red pyramid of Dashur with molecular ammonia inside of the structure. These t-shirts are absolutely fire. I am so happy with how these turned out. Check out thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a t-shirt. Also, limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, An Initiation into Ancient Chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, now available at thelandofchem.com. Link in the video description below. If you wanna help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a t-shirt, pick up a copy of the book. Either way, all of the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say, thank you. So now on to the metallurgy, which has always been one of my favorite topics from the ancient world. And hydrochloric acid, has relatively the same reactivity depending on concentration, temperature, etc., with all of the same metals as sulfuric acid. The big difference being the product of those two reactions, which I mentioned before. A metal dissolved in sulfuric acid is going to produce metallic sulfides, whereas a metal dissolved in hydrochloric acid is going to produce metal chlorides like ferric chloride, which we discussed earlier. And hydrochloric acid doesn't really react with all of the same metals as sulfuric acid. So why go through the process of building another huge pyramid just to make another similar acidic solution? Well, it is all about the gold, which you can see here in the center of this image. And no matter how concentrated or how hot you get your sulfuric acid solution, you are never going to dissolve gold. But with hydrochloric acid, you have three out of four parts of an ancient equation that was devised to finally accomplish the seemingly impossible. And that equation, ladies and gentlemen, is something called aqua regia. Three parts hydrochloric acid and one part nitric acid. And with this solution, you can dissolve gold. So nitric acid is a powerful oxidizing agent that can begin to liberate minute particles of gold ions and the hydrochloric acid reacts with those gold ions to form chlorouric acid in solution. And I'm gonna put a video in here showing this truly amazing and one of my personal favorite chemical reactions. And the following video comes to us from the Nerd Rage YouTube channel, link in the video description below.
All right, now you have seen these two acids, nitric and hydrochloric acids, working in synergy to gradually dissolve the gold, but you can't accomplish this without both of them. So we have seen the sulfuric acid being produced inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza and the hydrochloric acid being produced inside the Central Pyramid of Giza. But you may be thinking that I haven't discussed any structures in the first book that were designed to manufacture nitric acid. Well, you would be right. And ladies and gentlemen, I am just getting started. So please subscribe to The Land of Kim here on YouTube and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 46. The Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Engineering Acids Part 2. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. This will be the final episode in the series explaining the applications for the chemicals that were once being produced inside of the Egyptian pyramids. And I've already done an episode explaining the applications for the ferrous sulfate that was once being produced inside of the passage chamber structures across Europe, such as Newgrange. That is episode 29, Chemicals of the Tua de Danen, and I will put a link in the video description below. I highly recommend you check out that episode. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some major stuff coming up very, very soon. I am not sure which episode is going to premiere next, so it will be a surprise to you and me both. If you want to help support the channel, www.thelandofchem.com, limited first edition print copies of the book, brand new Land of Chem merch. Remember to follow me on Instagram at the Land of Chem. If you like the video, please like it. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave that in the comment section below. And don't forget, please subscribe and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed when the new videos premiere every single week. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo. Are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem. Click that little button and check out this new video. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>